Palancets by Carter Schultz and Glenn Harcourt, September 1984. This is the fourth novel in Series 3 A Science Fiction Specials that I'm reviewing. It follows Neuromancer. Those are big shoes to follow. From the introduction by Terry Carr, Carter Schultz and Glenn Harcourt's Palimpsests is a rich and fascinating novel that is utterly unlike anything before in science fiction. It deals with experiments in time travel, a staple subject in the field, but the story that develops strikes to the core of scientific inquiry, the shifting meanings of knowledge, and of every experience we have in life. It is, by turns and turns, a novel of mystery, of espionage, of philosophy and adventure, and intensely personal experience. I defy anyone to read the first chapter and thereafter not need to read the rest. The Random House Dictionary defines palimpsests as a parchment or the like from which writing has been partially or completely erased to make room for another text. You'll see how well the title fits this novel. Reality is always in question here, in so many ways that Philip K. Dick must be chuckling somewhere, but Schultz and Harcourt never lose sight of the primary reality of their narrator, an intelligent young man who is increasingly caught in the anomalies of time. In fact, it's this characterization of Camus, the narrator, that makes the novel a triumph. Camus is a very smart fellow, and all of his acquaintances, old and new, are very smart too. That's one of his problems as he tries to work his way through a maze of lies, half-truths, and contingent beliefs. There really isn't a dolt in this book, and the conversations throughout keep our intellects hopping. This may be the most civilized SF novel ever published. But does anyone here know the truth? See again the definition of palimpsest. Is there, after all, such a thing as truth? You've heard that question countless times before if you've read much science fiction, but you haven't had it posed in so many ingeniously dramatic ways as you'll find it here, nor have you seen the answers considered so carefully and affectingly. Palimpsest is very much in the classic science fiction tradition of the novel of ideas, firmly welded, to the emotions. On one hand, I have Terry Carr hard selling this novel. On the other hand, I know that this is the sole printing of palimpsests. That's a tough word to say. So if there's only been one printing, is it a hidden gem? Or are the publishers onto something? The blurb on the back of the cover says palimpsests, traces of ancient writing that can be seen underneath the latest overwriting on old parchments. Palimpsests enable humankind to see the past through the present. What if they could also predict the future? Barry Ann Malsberg says, Carter Schultz's short stories, which have been appearing since 1977, have convinced me that he is the best writer ever to do a body of work within genre science fiction. And his first novel, collaborative or otherwise, has to be a significant event. To me, that says that Barry hasn't read this book and is simply giving a blurb that he owed to Terry Carr. A two centimeter cube of unknown material has been found along with a Neanderthal skeleton at an archaeological dig near Dusseldorf. The protagonist, Hans Camus, discovers something that should not belong in the dig. The substance that this two centimeter cube is made of is unknown. Is this cube from the future? Does this mean that time travel is possible? What is the cube capable of? Unknown forces try to gain access to this cube, and Camus goes on the run. There's a lengthy portion as he makes his way across the United States with his girlfriend. Part espionage, part very personal accounts of a relationship, the novel moves in the final third to Alaska to try to figure out what is happening with this cube. Is this cube something that can be used for time travel? The premise sounds really interesting. However, I felt that Schultz and Harcourt really took the reader for a ride using multilingual language, references, sometimes very vague references to classical material, and rabbit trails galore. Perhaps a strength in their writing is when they were exploring the emotional relationships of Camus. But when it came to the science fiction elements, I found it very confusing. Carter Schultz wrote a lot of short fiction and another novel. Glenn Harcourt, as far as I can tell, never wrote another science fiction novel. So is this one worth reading? In my opinion, it's a difficult and unrewarding read. 
If I wasn't being disciplined in reading through the A Science Fiction Special Series 3, I doubt I would have even finished this novel. I think there really is a good reason that this is the only printing of this novel. I give it 4 out of 10. So with the fourth novel, I am now one third of the way through the 12 novels of the A Science Fiction Special Series 3. I have a playlist for these novels. You can find a link at the end of this video. So this was a steep fall from the cyberpunk masterwork of Neuromancer. What's next? Them Bones by Howard Waldrop. We'll see if this is a better read than Palimpsests. So has anyone come across this novel? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.